Essentially all this stuff in here, what's their plans for it? They're just selling the aluminium and copper out of it, basically. They okay. get it for dirt. What about all these printers and TVs? Same thing. No, Same they, thing. These, these TVs and monitors are broken, so because of that, they usually just sell the gold. They, if they can't find an easy way to fix it and make more money, then they just toss it. Okay, and those cases over there, they're packed full of parts. Yes, so they they're just still... haven't gotten to them yet. So they're going to pull all them apart. And Pretty then... much. And they're, either they're going to build them and sell them or... Yeah. Okay, interesting. If you guys have followed us for a while, you know that I love used price performance. And since I'm over in Taiwan for a big event called Computex, I came here a few days early to look for used price performance. But after I finished the deals hunt, which I'll put the link up here if you haven't seen that already, it then got me thinking about going to recycling centers. And I'm now here at the first location where this is a completely different thing altogether. What these locations do is that they simply work off volume. And in that, they'll just get a heap of parts that are simply untested and they will go through them so quickly and test if they work. If they don't work, then they'll use them for scrap metal and try and also get the gold off those particular parts. And the first location I'm at here now is a part where I'm coming to and I'm simply going to check it out, see what parts they have inside and also analyze everything inside this place to see how they exactly operate and what the conclusion is if anyone wants to come over to Taiwan and try and get used parts from recycling centers. With that aside, let's go find out what this place is all about. So here's the hard drives that they're testing out now. They're using a program called MHDD and this is just running through and checking essentially the health of the drives. So if they come out and pass the tests and they're healthy, then they can then resell them. But also whilst they're doing these tests, they're testing out a different power supply. They're also testing out a different CPU, motherboard and memory just for longevity. So some of those coolers that you see in mass on sale on eBay or AliExpress, for example, this is essentially where they come from. And now if they don't sell them over long periods of time, they then melt them down for the scrap metal. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is an old AMD LGA socket. Pretty cool when you think about it. So this is the test bench over here and this is where they test the products out but also show the potential customers if they work or not and the customers can then confirm if that's the board they want and if so, then you come to a bargain. But this store here is a little bit different. They essentially work off weight and they'll buy in volume off much bigger centers that don't even have time to test this stuff at all. So this is essentially the middleman, I guess you'd call it, in between them selling to other computer stores or selling direct to the customers. So I just finished up inside and the place actually doesn't even have an official name. So I don't even know how to name it. I can show you guys the location on the map if you wanna come and check it out. But I ended up picking up three motherboards which were LGA 1156 and they tested them on the spot but they also did a really good price because I said to them, look, I'm going back to Australia very soon, no risk sale. So in other words, after I take these motherboards out of here, I can't claim anything back in that when I get them back to Australia, if they don't work anymore, then I'm SOL. But that being said, they took the cooler off one of the motherboards they sold me and I was like, oh, could actually use that cooler. And they said, no, we're actually not gonna give you that cooler because we can use that for scrap metal. So the ideology behind here is just simply we sell what works and we sell what doesn't work. And they go through so many things every day here, testing out hard drives, testing out memory, testing out motherboards. So I was actually lucky that I scored these three boards for a grand total of 1400 NTD, which would be about 40 US dollars for three motherboards that all work. But that's the first location we've been to now. Let's go to an even bigger recycling center and see if they have any good deals that I can get or find out what they're all about. So right beside me is now the epicenter of where a wholesale deal starts. This is essentially, ladies and gentlemen, a scrapping center in the middle of Taiwan. Well, it's actually about 40 minutes outside the city, but this is where trucks will come in with a heap of different junk. And of course, some of those being used PC parts and then weigh the truck in. And then after they dump everything on the way out, they'll weigh their truck again and they'll get paid the difference in weight per kilo. 
So from these places, people like me, for instance, or businesses may come in and then bargain for these used PC parts. But let's take a look at what they've got inside and see why exactly a place like this can be so good to get a deal. So right here, we've got a heap of hard drives. A lot of these look like they're just simply exposed to the open weather. And so once they get rained on, a lot of these microelectronics uh, will no longer be of any use. But the good thing is a lot of these computers, even if they do get rained on, if there's CPUs inside, they'll still be salvageable. And some of the components, in fact, will be salvageable as well. But this in the meantime, looks like some of these parts may or may not work, but we're gonna to talk to them very soon and see what we can get. So the first PC we're pulling apart here, they just given us a screwdriver and they said, look, you can check through all these different systems. And basically what we're gonna do is start pulling out some of these parts and then we can then barter uh, with the individual who owns this yard and work out a price. So what we're gonna do now is actually pull apart a few different systems. And since I do this quite a lot, I know what to look out for. The first thing we're gonna do is at least make sure it has a Windows 7 sticker on the computer. That way we know its hardware isn't that old. But with that in mind, we've got this H55 motherboard that we're pulling out. This is essentially the juice of this build. The case is pretty much worthless. The power supply is really mediocre, but the motherboard itself is definitely worth a few dollars. So that's the first system. We're gonna see what they'll take for this. And then after that, if the price is right, we'll then pull a few more systems apart and see what we can get. Another very valuable thing on these systems is the Windows 7 Pro licenses. They can essentially be upgraded within tandem, the motherboard that you pick out of the system, to Windows 10 Pro. And you've now got a refurbished system with a legitimate Windows 10 Pro license. Going through some of these parts here, these are essentially worthless, right? Something like this is definitely not going to work as it's been heavily rained on since this area is exposed to the open nature. And with that, when it does rain, some of these PCs are going to get quite damaged. However, the main purpose of a place like this keeping a lot of this hardware is that they're actually gonna melt it down for the rare metals inside. And especially with the older parts in the older generations of used PC parts, there was a lot more of these rare metals used before the prices hiked on exchanges. Now, another thing going on here is this Kingston memory. If you guys remember when they advertised this stuff, at least back when this stuff was available, it had lifetime warranty. So a lot of people will come to places like this and not have to worry about the memory being faulty because since it does carry a lifetime warranty, they can go get it replaced, especially in a place like Taiwan where Kingston has a service center in the main electronics hub. So now we've picked out a heap of parts that we're curious about. We're gonna try and barter with them and see what prices we can come up with. And what we have in total is four hard drives, four motherboards, and we don't know exactly what CPUs these will have inside. But regardless of what CPU is inside, if the price is right, then the price is right. So we ended up just getting out of that scrapyard and it ended up being pretty good. Now here's where things are gonna take a little turn in a different direction, I guess. I did notice the body language between Marco, who's my translator for this video, and the guy who owned the store, at least the shift worker who was in charge of that scrapyard. And I noticed his body language was, I guess he didn't really wanna deal with outsiders people who weren't regular customers perhaps. And I have seen this in the past, over 10 years ago, when I dealt with car parts in Japan. I found a very big uh, scrap yard for where they were scrapping car parts and I was getting some really good deals time after time, but then they changed management and all of a sudden I didn't get access to any deals anymore. So it's always an important thing that the individual, or in this case the seller, just naturally likes you and wants to deal with you and strike a good bargain. So what exactly happened with the parts that we got here? Well, it ended up being a little bit back and forth where 
We didn't strike a deal initially and I ended up walking because they wanted about 1500 NTD for the four sets of motherboards and the four CPUs and a little bit of memory and some hard drives. But four of those CPUs in those motherboards were potato CPUs. No one really wants them in a used gaming PC. Everyone either wants an i5 or an i7. So they all had i3s or Pentiums. So that was pretty much useless. The stock coolers, they weren't really worth it. So that 1500 NTD, which in US dollar terms would be about 50 US dollars, wasn't that good of a deal considering we don't know at all if these parts work. And since we're after the motherboards, that's usually in a used PC that's trash like this, is probably going to be the most common problem or most problematic part that isn't going to work. So I'd like to think of it as almost a 50% gamble that these motherboards actually won't work at all. And since we just came from a place where we were getting 500 NTD and 400 NTD for a motherboard, I guess about 350 NTD a board that we don't know works isn't really worth it, especially since I do have to then lug those boards back to Australia. So what I decided to do was come back with an offer of, hey, you can take the CPUs out since I know they have the most rare metals in them compared to any other part. And you can also take the memory since they're only two gigabyte sticks and they're not really worth that much at all and the coolers and we'll just take the motherboards for 900 NTD for four motherboards. He then thought about it and he thought about it for a long time and then he said sure. So he ended up giving us 900 NTD for four untested motherboards. So it was a pretty good deal but of course I've still got to test them and I will report back in the description and the comments on whether these boards or which ones end up working and which ones don't. Now another thing that I noticed with this place was they didn't know the prices of parts all too well. So when I asked him afterwards how much they would take for the hard drives, he said 100 NTD or about three US dollars for each hard drive. And of course, having all varying sizes, you want to get the one that's the biggest size when it comes to computer parts. So I ended up getting a one terabyte hard drive for three dollars. And I had a lot of fun doing this. It was a new experience. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey. We did do a lot of traveling. And it's funny, the further you go out of the city, the more you're going to find places like we found today where you can get some really good deals. Deals that trump that of the internet, deals that trump that of some of the places in the city. And the places like, for instance, the first place we went to, they didn't even ask more initially. They just said, look, you can have these boards for 500 NTD, which was cheaper than some of the other parts that we got in the used parts hunt vlog. So out of the city, you don't even need to hustle and you'll get really good prices. Of course, I didn't really want to try my luck because I thought they were already doing me a really good deal and they were testing those parts out right in front of me. But ultimately, when it comes to getting deals, it's always looking for the things that other people aren't doing and going to a scrapyard or in this case, the source of where all these used parts come from, in my opinion, or at least the real good deals come from. That's definitely going to be an avenue if you want to build a cheap gaming PC for even cheaper than I could build it for. And lastly, a big thanks to Marco, who's a friend of mine who speaks Chinese, and he found all these places for us, and it was uh, quite a difficult task. So make sure you guys show him some love yet again in the comments, because this content otherwise wouldn't be happening without him. And with that aside, I'll catch each and every one of you in.
So I just tested out all four of these motherboards and all four of them worked absolutely fine. So that is shockingly good value for money in the case of hitting up the recycling center. The hard drive as well, we're gonna talk about that first because that's the most scary of the five parts that I got from the recycling center. And what was so scary about it was that the particular person who dumped it or company, they left all the data on board this uh, disk drive. And I've always said in the past, and I think a lot of you guys already know that you should always erase all the data on a drive before you sell it or get rid of it. And in this case, this had like all information on business to business tradings of like AMD, Nvidia, graphics cards and stuff like that. And some of it was quite scary because you could see minimum order quantity prices, you could see sample prices, and it's just stuff that should not be getting to the public eye. And in the case of me, it's right up my alley with enthusiast tech and same with you guys. We all understand this enthusiast tech and what it means. And so it was just ironic that a person in enthusiast tech who found this drive, it's got all information loaded with this stuff on it. Would have been a little bit funny if it was loaded up with like, I don't know, maybe cat cages or something and some other completely different business, but this is right down our alley. And so I was really shocked to see all this information still on the drive. Uh, so yeah, definitely wanna delete all this uh, private information next time, guys, before you get rid of a drive. But of course, the good news, one terabyte hard drive for $3 uh, US, I think, it's really good price. I got it for a hundred new Taiwan dollars, which is just a ridiculously good price for a one terabyte hard drive of this caliber. Uh, the other one terabyte hard drive I got in the parts hunt as well, that works absolutely fine. I did come back and I have tested that. But now onto the motherboards where we got three H55Ms and these all worked absolutely fine. Uh, they all worked in little bit different ways where one of them had a dead CMOS battery the other had a load operating system flashing. Then the other one looked like it just was waiting for the operating system. But regardless, all these three boards from the Gigabyte side of things will work absolutely fine because I've seen all these uh, boot screens before. So that was a really good deal we got on those three boards. The ASRock board itself was a little bit bizarre in that when I first initially booted it, I had a memory stick in A1 and it wouldn't boot. Then I changed over to B1 and it booted fine. And then once I had two sticks in, it would boot as well. So that was a little bit bizarre. Maybe they didn't spend a whole lot of time writing the BIOS on this particular board and B1 should have been A1. And that's why it wouldn't boot off A1 initially, if that makes any sense. But never seen a H71 before. And it was quite surprising to see a SKU like this actually existed. And the form factor is definitely a little bit weird, but regardless, it does work fine. And that's the main thing and it will hopefully power up a gaming system coming to your sub boxes soon. But I think the biggest thing to come out of today's video is the fact that recycling centers, at least in the Taiwan and in Asia, can be an absolute gold mine for picking up used parts. And in the cases of a lot of these businesses, they just don't have time to sell these things to the public, so they dump them and a lot of the times they're just loaded up with new parts. Now, I'm pretty sure part of that dumping is probably like, oh, make sure this data is all erased and it doesn't get to the public. So maybe I was a one-off, I'm not too sure. If you guys have heard of any stories or any experiences like this, then be sure to let us know in the comment section below. But this was just a crazy experience where I got the best deals of the best deals in Taiwan from the scrap yards and going in there and hustling as well as getting four legit Windows licenses to go along with all these four motherboards. I think that's one of the best things to come out of it. And the boards themselves only costed me like under 10 US dollars a pop. So really good value for money. Of course, they did want a bit more money for all these CPUs and memory if they came with that. But in terms of the CPUs, the coolers and the memory, I decided to pass on that because they did want a bit of money for them and they were really bad CPUs like i3-550s, stuff that you could not use in gaming PCs and get realistically good value for flipping when you can add like a, an X3440 and then that costs about $9 and you can then reflip that and make much more money than you would with an i3-550 if that makes any sense. But ultimately scavenging through a junkyard and getting PC parts was a massive success. I thought one of these boards would have been faulty or one of these parts would have been faulty, but they weren't. And I guess something to look out for would be make sure the parts look good on the surface because 
if they got rust on them or if they look like they've been sitting outside in the rain, I would have passed on them. These sort of were like looking like they were fresh parts that had came in that day, possibly even in the morning. And pretty much I just went to town on them and got all the good stuff out. And even though I didn't have enough time and my suitcase was really limited because I'd already picked up a heap of used parts before that, I would have loved to have gone back there and sort of cleaned the whole place out the next day. Uh, but yeah, in terms of my suitcase and how I pack things, if you guys want to see a separate video on that, then I can definitely do that. But essentially how it works was I use all the clothes that are dirty and wrap the parts in for cushioning. So that way I get my clothes in the suitcase, I get the parts in the suitcase. And as you can see in this vlog, they all come back absolutely fine. There's no damage to them. So really good experience in terms of hustling, getting the best deals. But at the same time, it's also a lot of fun. So if you guys want to go out of the city, especially in Taiwan and do this same thing, then also be prepared to not only budget a lot of time because it did take me an hour and a half to get out there, but also have someone who speaks the local lingo. I can't stress how important this is. If I didn't have someone like Marco who spoke Chinese, I wouldn't have been able to communicate at all or do any sort of bargaining. It would have been impossible because they didn't even speak like any basic words of English. And I wouldn't expect them to. It is their country, that's their language. Uh, but in the case of Thailand, for example, when I went bargain hunting by myself, there was always someone close by if that the person didn't speak English that would be able to translate or speak a bit of English and you'd be able to negotiate and come to an agreement. Anyway guys, that's it for the Junkyard Scavenge. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what was your favorite deal in today's pick. And also, if you saw anything that you thought was cool in the background or anything like that, let us know in the comments. But I know you guys love this used price performance stuff and these boards and this hard drive, it's definitely gonna be part of an upcoming build coming to your sub box. I don't know when, as I got a lot going on, uh, but it's definitely gonna be hitting hard, the price performance. And I'm probably gonna have to order a few Xeons off AliExpress to accommodate these boards. But with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And if you enjoy this one, be sure to slap that like button and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.